This is what high resolution pixel art looks like. Everything is super smooth. You could see that the entire game is rendering at the full scale of my resolution. Now, this is what low resolution pixel art looks like. And you can see it has some problems in some areas. But in other areas, it looks way better than the high resolution pixel art. Hence the uh, particle effect up here. It looks a lot better like this than it did before. But you can see there's also some issues. This camera, for instance, is uh, not as smooth. It can be smoother if you have a resolution in your game higher. Assets used in this project are made by Fartfish. Link in the description. He has some pretty cool stuff. So check him out. So before we start combining these two styles, we need to make sure our project settings are correct. So just go to your project settings window. Go to your stretch mode. Set that to 2D, which essentially is just going to render everything at the resolution of your monitor. One other property that we're actually going to need to enable is in rendering 2D, we're going to turn on use GPU pixel snap. Essentially what pixel snap does, if you're zooming the camera or making super small changes in the camera's position, it's going to make sure it doesn't actually like add different pixels. It, it just it just looks weird if you don't. So just make sure that's on. Now to combine low resolution, high resolution pixel art, we're going to use something called a viewport. This viewport is going to render at a different resolution back up to our base resolution of our screen. Select your objects that you want to have this low resolution feel to them. These particles look really good at lower resolutions and I think the spinning square is going to look good. So just drag them under your viewport and as you can see they, they're gone. They disappear. They're no longer here. And to fix that, go to your viewport. We're going to set the size to the width and height of our game. Find this, go in project settings. The width and height of your game are in the window settings. 256 by 144 for me. Now the only other property that we're going to enable in our viewport is transparent background. Just enable that. And that's everything for a viewport. But you can see they're still not rendering and that's because we need a texture to render to. So we're going to add a new node. It's going to be a texture rectangle and I'm just going to name this viewport texture. And then I'm going to set the width and height of this texture to 256 by 144. Same as the width and height of the game. Now we're going to set the texture to a viewport texture of our viewport. And now you can see they're in the game, but it's not right. They were up here and now they're down here and now the particles are going in their opposite direction. This is because everything is flipped. Now in the render target of our viewport, we're actually going to enable vflip, which is going to flip them to the right position. Now you can see that it's being rendered at a lower resolution. You can see that my particles are now like in pixels. They're no longer weird. See, so this is the this is the difference. These are what particles look like in HD, a lot smoother. You put them under the viewport and they look a lot better. Now you can see they're in our viewport texture. So let's play our game and see what it looks like. They're getting cut off, especially this particle effect that I have moving back and forth. It's getting cut off between the size of this texture, which is not good, not what we want. Now what you could try to do is you could like say, oh, I'll just resize the textures to the size of the game. That works perfectly, right? And then I start resizing these and now it's moving it. So that's not really a good solution. A better solution for this is to add a canvas layer to our game. This canvas layer is like a UI layer for our game. It's just going to render over the top of everything. Now we're going to drag our viewport texture under this canvas layer. And now this is going to be rendered over everything. We could test this again and we're going to see that the position does not move. It's 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 on my screen and that's not what we want. We want them to have their local position. This is because we don't have a camera. Now, if you don't have any cameras in your game, then this is probably going to work just fine. But we have a camera in our game. We want them to move to their actual position. We don't want them to just be on the person's screen the entire time. Now, to fix this, we just add a second camera 2D that's under our viewport. Now, you're going to want to make sure this camera 2D is set to current. So now it's the current camera of our viewport. The reason why we need a second camera is this is going to specify the local coordinates of where these objects should actually be rather than just rendering on top of the screen and ignoring where they are currently. Now, I'm going to rename this camera to viewport camera. And in this viewport camera, we're going to add a script. Now, in the script of our viewport camera, we actually need to make it follow our camera that's right here. So I have a camera that's under my character object right here, and we want it to follow this camera. So in order to access this camera object, I'm actually going to make a new script in our file system. I'm going to call it global, and we're going to save it. And now in our global script, all we're going to do is say var camera equals null. And then we're going to go in our project settings and auto load our global script as global. And now any object can access this global script. And now we're going to go to our camera script that's under our player or wherever camera you're currently using in your game. And all we're going to do is in the ready function, we're just going to say global.camera equals self. And then when we exit the tree, global.camera equals null. So essentially, we're the camera. Now any object can access global.camera and we could see if that actually exists and then access the camera's positions and whatever. So now we can go in our viewport camera and in our viewport camera under the process function we could say if is instance valid global.camera and if the instance is valid and the camera does exist in the scene tree then we could say global position equals global.camera.global position we're essentially updating our position
position to the camera's position. There's still some other properties that we need to inherit though. We need to do offset. If you're updating camera offset, this is important. Global.camera.offset. You want to make sure you update that offset. Any any property that you're manipulating in your original camera, you want to manipulate in the viewport camera so they're in sync. Now zoom, I'm doing zoom too. So global.camera.zoom. And these are all the properties I use. You might have to use rotation degrees if you want equals global.camera.rotation degrees. Depends, everything that you use. Now, if you're using smoothing as well, any other properties right here, I'm using smoothing on this player camera. We're gonna make sure that we're using smoothing on this camera too. Depends on your project. You might not need to turn on smoothing if you're not using it on the original camera. Just depends. But now we're updating this camera to this camera's position. It's essentially just mm -hmm. making a camera follow it. Now, the viewport has a camera that's perfectly in line following our camera. It should work now. So we press play. And would you look at that? And you can see that they're holding their position because we have another camera that's actually in line. And this particle effect's flying around. You can see it's not getting cut off by the edges of the screen anymore, which looks freaking awesome. So now you're, you basically combine HD pixel art with low resolution pixel art. Great. Now we can push it even further. In our viewport texture, we can actually put shaders onto it. So I'm gonna add a new shader. You don't have to do this. I'm gonna paste some shader code that's just for an outline. You can see now that everything's being outlined with this white outline. Well, I'm just gonna make it black and now everything has this black outline. And this is how you get outlines around your particle effects. And this is this looks really nice because now everything is kind of just interacting, especially with the outlines just merging together. There you go. Source code for this project along with other projects is on my Patreon. So if you're interested, you could support me, get some of the source code, you can get some pixel art. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next one.